Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Simon again, bringing you some more Magic the Gathering D&D crossover lore. And luckily, I'm joined again by Jordan with a PH. He's my he, he's my he's my dungeon master on tap for this little crossover experiment that we're doing. Jordan, how you doing, man? I'm doing so well. This is so fun. Uh, lots of lots of fun comments from our last video. People were like, "It's the crossover we deserve," and it was just fun. I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. So if you guys like this content, make sure you comment down below. It goes it goes a long way in supporting us and letting us know you guys like this stuff as much as we do because we're having a lot of fun in these discussions right now. Yeah, it's super fun. <laughs> but today we're going to be talking about Magic the Gathering's Planeswalkers that they're bringing in from D&D. These are characters from Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition and other editions that have a lot of extensive history and lore to them. And I thought, who better to go over these characters' lore than someone who's well steeped in all that stuff? Jordan here, he was the first one to come to mind. Uh, luckily, he could come on here, and he's going to teach us all a little bit about the Planeswalkers found in Adventures in the Forgotten Realms today. Yeah. So, and, and I want to define it again. A Planeswalker is just somebody who goes from plane to plane. So That's correct, yep. He... You could be a, a god or a wizard or anything. It's just you get that that subtype if you traver, traverse. Because I was really curious about some of these. I'm like, why is that person a planeswalker, but this person's a deity or something? That's a, And you know, that's a great point that we can bring up. Let's actually start with that question right now. So in Dungeons & Dragons, what are the characters that you typically would associate with a, being a planeswalker anyone who can traverse the planes or are there different worlds that they can go to different levels of reality where do you think where do those lie in D and D's lore well there's a there's a really high level spell called plane shift that mm -hmm. allows and wizards get it that allows wizards to uh go from one uh plane to another okay and within the D, &D cosmology they call it the great wheel cosmology the prime material plane where we all live is in the center and then reflections of of light and dark are on either side and that's called the feywild and the shadow fell and then outside of that are the four elemental planes and then like wheel spokes on the outside are i think it's 16 or more different planes and so if you're uh they don't call them planeswalkers but like the idea is that if you use this plane shift spell and you know where you're going you can go to those planes and those planes are where the gods usually live. And so okay. uh, when you die and your soul goes to your God, you would then go to the plane where that God resides and kind of hang out there. Oh, uh, okay. It, so it's weird. And then you, you know, spend your life there and or the rest of your, your days or whatever. So the good gods are on the top, the upper planes and the bad gods are on the lower planes. And then there's a neutrality aspect in the middle. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. So it's, it's, to me um specifically like like i would think of a of a high level wizard but not necessarily like a, a a devil or a demon or a deity or something but i suppose if they had access to those spells which they do probably being large magical creatures <laughs> okay so that that's actually great because it shows the difference between a D, &D quote-unquote planeswalker and a magic the gathering planeswalker because uh beans and mtg's you know canon uh, you're either born with a uh, a spark, something that makes you a planeswalker, or you're not. Uh, there have been those who tried to like harvest a spark and gain that ability over time, but uh, basically, in, in, you know, be blunt about it, if you're not born a planeswalker, you're not a planeswalker, and you don't have the ability to traverse the multiverse. So it sounds like there's a huge difference between a D&D &D planeswalker, quote-unquote, and an MTG planeswalker, in that in D&D, &D, if you learn the spell, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, you know what? Then let's then let's 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 take a look at some of these characters who've learned those spells and that are now planeswalkers for a sense of the better word in Magic the Gathering set Adventure in the Forgotten Realms. Let's go ahead and start with the blue planeswalker for this set. Can you go over briefly who exactly is Mordenkainen? Yeah, so Mordenkainen is a magical wizard. Um he has become seeped in all aspects of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I talk about the different planes, like Ravenloft is a plane, like mm -hmm. we were talking earlier. Um, and Mordenkainen is a high level wizard that led a group of wizards called the Circle of Eight mm -hmm. on his native plane of Oerth, which is the plane Greyhawk. 
Okay. Uh, and he, yeah, and so he's part of Greyhawk, which was kind of the original setting for D&D in the 70s and 80s. Okay. And there, he was one of eight wizards. They were the Circle of Eight, and they really were just NPCs, uh, You, which is non-player characters. You would, like, run up to them, and they would give you jobs. Uh, they would do this. Uh, there are certain spells named after them, like Morning Canaan's Faithful Hound uh, and stuff like that, because they were they were creating a lot of these spells and magic. Okay. Um. Yeah. So that's so that's a that actually, wizard for the most part. <laughs> uh, you know that's perfectly fine. Um, and so Mordecai and you said they has a connection to these these dogs. Obviously, in the artwork for his card in Magic: The Gathering is pictured with an illusionary dog, and he makes dog tokens, sort of thing. What is it, what is his connection with these blue illusionary dogs? You know, I that's weird. That's a good question. I don't actually know. I know that he invented the spell Mordecai and Faithful Hound. Okay. So I wonder if they're playing off of that. Uh, and the spell in D and D is you cast this spell, and this illusionary spectral dog basically watches over you while you sleep. Okay. So it it does it can attack and it does do some damage, but uh, in Dungeons and Dragons, after a long day, you need to take a long rest to like refresh your abilities and basically go to sleep. Yeah, as and one with does. That you could be attacked, and nobody wants to be attacked at night. So Morning Canaan invented the spell. Uh, where you conjure a little puppy, or a, I shouldn't say a puppy, but like a dog, a mastiff, <laughs> and it walks around and it just kind of patrols and watches out for you. Yeah, and okay. You can, get, you can say to it, hey, if you see a monster bark and wake us all up, or you could say if you see something, attack it. You can kind of give it like uh, programming instructions in a way. Gotcha. Okay, so that actually explains a lot about why he has this dog. I know a lot of people have reached out and just say, hey, who is Mordecai and why does he have this, you know, you know, like illusion dog with him so that's a great the, the, if you're not playing D and you don't know this character you might not know that he has the spell mordecai and his faithful hound and hey it's a mastiff and and i guess in the lore maybe uh and and the artwork for his card hey, it's a blue mastiff so hey it's a flavor win i guess so I real quick, I just wanted to look up his spells. So yeah. I don't know if they're making an appearance in, in Magic the Gathering, but uh, Morden Kanan's Faithful Hound, obviously, but he also has a spell called Morden Kanan's Sword, where he conjures a sword of force. Mm -hmm. Like it's just like a magical blade that hovers around and attacks for you. Uh, Morden Kanan's Magnificent Mansion is you summon a giant mansion that lasts for 24 hours. Okay. Uh, so you and your friends can go inside and and be safe from the outside world. Okay. Uh, and then uh, there's the last one. Mordecai and private sanctum is you create like a a special demi plane almost uh, where you you kind of like are locked in there uh, and people can't get in or out. So it's kind of like a safety area. Mm, interesting. Obviously, it's, some of those abilities might be a little too powerful for Magic the Gathering. Uh, it looks like his Planeswalker card basically just focuses on, you know, gaining knowledge through drawing cards uh, and, of course, creating these blue dog tokens. So a little bit more limited in scope, but hey, that's that's Magic the Gathering for you. You don't want to make something too OP that you have to ban it in the same standard set. All right. He, uh, I'll say this. He's currently a, a planeswalker. Uh, I, I did a little bit of research beforehand because I knew we were going to talk about this. But yeah. He has a tower um, that is in Avernus, which is the first layer of hell. And he's in there like studying hell because he's a, he's a he's a scientist. He really wants to understand the world and the planes and stuff. And so that... his current home is in this tower in hell where he's running scientific experiments on devils or something. And see, and that's and that's more flavor that, that appears on the car than, than you can first give credit because you say the dog and like, oh yeah, he has a dog. That's funny. But his card is all about having like no maximum hand size. And that's all, that all speaks to obtaining as much knowledge as possible. So it really speaks to his scientific and research background as a character in D&D. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's a great place for us to wrap up then. Uh, Jordan, if you want to do a quick shout out for your content to all my peoples to find out where you they can find more from you. Yeah. So if you're interested in Dungeons and Dragons lore, there's a lot and there's a lot of different campaign settings and I try to cover most of them. So if you're interested in Forgotten Realms lore, 
there's a lot. I think the majority of my channel is Forgotten Realms lore, but I have also done some Ravenloft lore. Uh, there was a fun space D&D setting called Spelljammer back in the day, and I do talk about how planets work in a fantasy setting, so it's kind of fun. And if you're interested in any of those stuff, uh, head on over. It's youtube.com slash Jordan with a PH in the middle. Check cool. it out. Guys, I really recommend his content. It's fantastic. I started watching him like three years ago. His stuff's great. Really honored to have him on the channel here sharing the lore of these Planeswalkers with you guys today. But if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more of this, me and Jordan here, we love having the discussion. So if you guys like it, we're more than happy to keep them going. Leave a like on the video, comment down below, and of course hit that notification bell so you know when our videos go up. But until next time, guys, see ya. See you later.